In this video I'll be reviewing the Motorola Defy. So first of all I'd like to say a big thank you to Motorola for sending us this product to review. So here's the phone here, this is one of Motorola's Android phones and it's designed to be extremely tough. So you can get this wet but you can drop it, completely scratch resistant, really tough device. But it's also a really good Android phone. So on the front of the phone here we see a fairly basic look with four capacitive buttons down the bottom, menu, home, back and search. These work really well and are really responsive and also provide haptic feedback when they're pressed. We also get a 3.7 inch capacitive touchscreen with a resolution of 480 by 854 which provides slightly extra height than regular Android phones. In practice I've not found any issues with apps displaying on the slightly higher resolution however this may be the case however it's extremely unlikely I've not had any issues at all with this. The screen is also made of Gorilla Glass which is extremely scratch resistant so you're not likely to get this scratched at all which is really nice. It also seems to be fairly good with fingerprints. It does get a few but they're not major. Okay, so on the side of the phone here we see it's very plain with these little screw things. They don't seem to do anything but they're there. And we have a little plastic cover covering up the micro USB charging socket. You have to close these securely before you put it underwater in case it gets leaks in through there. Bottom of the device is almost nothing and in fact the microphone is actually located here tiny little thing, you can barely see it. On this side of the device, we have again th three screw things and a little volume rocker here for turning the volume up and down. Top of the device, we have a power, power switch as well as a little rubber thing covering up um, there we go, a 3.5mm headphone jack and again you want to cover this up if you want to get it wet. Back of the device, we see a flash and a 5 megapixel camera which is actually quite a good camera and I'll show you that later and a little microphone here which I believe is for um, noise reduction a little Motorola logo with blur which is Moto Blur technology and here's a little catch for removing the back cover which is actually really nice, it makes the back cover extremely easy to remove and reinsert whereas another phone you want to leave it apart, all you need to do on this one is literally slide this little catch down the back pops straight off and then to put the back back on, line the top up, put it down and slide the catch along and it goes straight back on really nice feature so let's turn this device on, so you just hold the switch down and it'll start up. So let it start up to let you see the idea of how fast it boots and I'll go over the specs of this device. So in here you have an 800MHz processor which is an ARM Cortex-A8 not hugely powerful, there are more powerful phones out there with 1GHz plus CPUs and their dual core and stuff however this has no problem in performing most tasks fluently no major issues there. You've got 512 megabytes of RAM, which again, you can get other phones with more, but no issues in this device. And the main thing with this device is not designed to be an ultra powerful phone, it's more designed to be an ultra tough phone. Internally, you've got 2GB of storage, however you also get a 2GB micro SD card included, which is really nice to get. Um, obviously you've got Wi-Fi on here, and it comes with Android 2.1 as standard, however it is possible to upgrade this to 2.2 Froyo. So as you see that's the device started up, it's not a hugely lengthy boot up procedure which is really nice. So we'll unlock it there, nice fairly fluid unlock thing. So I'm going to put out the lights and let you see the screen better. So be back in a minute. So as you can see we're back with the Defy with all the lights off so we can see the screen well. So here's the front of the device with it just lock screen, very nice. They've customised it slightly with, oops, with slightly different slidey things here, just slightly different shape but just a standard lock screen, you can also put passcodes or patterns on here to lock it time there, stuff like that, as well as an emergency dialer you can then just swipe that along to unlock and we're back into the main interface so this runs Moto Blur, which is Motorola's interface that really tries to incorporate social networking allowing friend updates, all social network updates all on the home screens, which is really nice now you, when you swipe into the home screens it seems fairly fluid at first I thought it was a a problem with the phone itself was making it really slow to swipe however I think the fact is it swipes really fast so it looks a bit jerky but it's fine, nice and fluid, after using it for a while it seems absolutely fine um, one minor complaint that I found, which isn't major however it is a bit of a pest is when you swipe between the home screens you see a little bit pops up at the bottom and this allows you to tap to swipe between home screens quickly which is quite nice however the only flaw that I found is, is as you swipe you have to wait for this to disappear before you can access this buttons so if I wanted to swipe back to the another home screen and then open the app drawer you can't just swipe it and press it, you have to swipe it and wait for that to disappear and then you can open the app, oops <laughs> and then you can open the app drawer 
which is a bit of a minor, it's a minor inconvenience, takes a little bit extra of time, but it's not a major problem. So, as I said, that opens the app drawer, so we're straight in. Nice big full screen app drawer, simple swiping up and down. Seems fairly fluid, occasionally jerks, lags a little bit as I'm swiping, but not a major problem. So there's all the apps. Most of these came pre-installed, with the exception of Angry Birds, Get Jar, and Quadrant. I installed them myself, however, all the other ones came pre-installed. So, that's the phone there. So, as we're talking about the camera, you've got a 5 megapixel camera, as well as a camcorder, which you can also see here. So if you open the camcord camera and camcorder apps, they just open up. Seems to be lagging a little bit, there we go. So that's the camera app. It's quite a nice little app, actually. I'll turn it around a little bit, so you can see it. Obviously you're not going to see anything on the screen, but I'll show you all the features in it. So that button takes photos. You can also press there to bring out things such as scenes, effects, as well as your flash and switching to the video camera. So there's effects. You can't really use them unless you've got a picture on your screen, but they are quite nice little effects to have. You can also go to scenes, which allows you to pick different scenes for your photos, portrait, all that sort of stuff. Again, nice to have. Turn your flash on and off, also nice. And then you can go to the video camera, like that. The video camera, unfortunately, is a slight problem with this device, as it's only VGA resolution, whereas other devices can do HD. It's not a hugely bad quality video camera for filming basic shots, however you wouldn't want to film much with it, as it is fairly low resolution, and that does come out in your video. However, the video is fairly smooth, and sound quality is excellent. So what I'll now do is I'm going to go and I'm going to shortcut to and show you some video and photo clips that I took with this camera. Okay, so the first photo here is an outside shot that I took quite nice, you see all the colours quite well. The next one was also taken outside, very nice, the colours came out really well and I really like the colour reproduction on this phone. It's also quite good resolution and performed quite well despite this photo not being in the best lighting. This photo was also taken inside with in a completely black, black room with the flash. So I had the room completely dark, no other light in the room at all and I used the flash and the photo came out nice and very well. So now we're going to cut to it and show you some video footage from this device, so here it is. Okay, this is a test of the video quality on the Motorola Defy. You can also probably tell the sound quality from this video as well. Unfortunately the camera is only VGA resolution, so you're not going to get ultra high resolution things. So if you're wanting a phone for a really good high quality video, this probably isn't one for you. However, it's fairly decent, you know, fairly smooth, no real problems. And in your bright and dark conditions, there's no real issues. So here we're back at the device again. So the, as you can see, the camera is very good quality, and I was overall very impressed with it. Call quality is also very good, I had no problems hearing the other person, or them hearing me, very good quality. You probably also heard the quality from the internal microphone in that video. So now let's take a look at the other things on this device. So obviously you've got your Motoblur here, which allows you to, if you connect to social networks, you can have them all here. You can also pin contacts to your home screens, which is really nice. So if I wanted to say have one of my favourite contacts here, because I would press that there, and pick a contact, say I wanted Billy Bob, press Billy Bob, and you can just, you know, select later. And you see there, Billy has appeared here. And you can simply add different aspects of Billy Bob's profile to this page. So you can add, say, contact details and social networking. And back on the home screen, both of these appear. So this allows you to easily call people very easily through here. So you can pin your contacts onto it. You've got your messages, which are sort of emails, contacts, and social networking. So it's a very social network based phone. You've got your weather widget, which is also really nice. So it's very, very nice. Um, quickly show you the text messaging interface. So if you're to create a new message, it's fairly standard Android. However, it uses the swipe keyboard, which is really nice if you've not seen it before. So what you do is, I'll zoom in to let you see this, is you swipe, you can use it like a normal keyboard, but if you wanted to type, you can swipe your finger over the letters you want, and it works out the word. And even if you're not very accurate, it's still really good. So I'll show you write a quick message. H-E-L-O. Hello. And world. Oops. There you go. Very nice. And it means once you get used to this, you can type really quickly just by swiping your finger. So I really like this keyboard. You've also got your very essential dedicated smiley button, which is what everyone needs. So that's really nice to get that as standard, which I really like. Okay, so next you've got you your content, contacts manager, which is done by pressing these people here, this person, giving you stuff here. And you've got all your contacts here. And you can swipe left to right on here to get things like your contacts history your actual contacts, as well as any status, social networking status updates from your contacts. You can also press here to get into your dialer, which is just over here, a regular phone dialer, which is very nice. This also shows, allows you to choose recent calls. 
your contacts that have phone numbers attached, as well as pinning favourite contacts. So that's really nice if you want to make quick calls. Let's take a look at the speed of this device doing general tasks. So one that's quite good to see is in maps. So if we're to go into Google Maps, it loads up a nice map. And you can see zooming in and out has no problems, it's fairly fast and nice and responsive. Also pinch to zoom works really well, with no speed issues, no lag between my fingers, which is really nice because that's one of these things that some slower phones don't have the issue with. However, we don't, I don't see any problems with the 800MHz processor in this phone letting it down in that sort of performance. So that's really good. Also got the browser, which will open up. So we'll load up our website on here. Which is quite a heavy website, especially for a phone to deal with. However, it's loading up fairly quickly, no major issues. And as you can see, our nice little jQuery slider thing here is running without any flaws whatsoever. Zooming in again on this page is also fairly fast. Slightly slower than other things, just because of all the elements on here. However, it's got no issues browsing this site at a decent speed, so that's really, really nice. The browser isn't that fancy, it is very, basically the stock Android browser, so there's nothing really to report in here. It's not been customised really by Motorola. So now if we go into the app drawer and look at performance in some apps, so if we were to open up Angry Birds, and see the performance in here, so... Good Angry Birds, which is quite a good game for actually benchmarking phones. So, come in here. So that's it loading up there. It doesn't take too long to load, not seeing any problems here. Loads slightly slower than some high-end devices, but not major problems, so play, here we go, and here, and we're in. So, as you see, when I'm running the game, you know, throwing birds at pigs, it's not lagging at all, we've not got any major issues in the gameplay, runs fairly smoothly, no major issues, lags very rarely, but no major problems, and it, in fact, runs games very well. So if you are looking for a phone to run games, you could go much worse than this phone. It, not obviously designed for games, but it does run them fairly well, which is good. So let's leave that and open up Quadrant Standard, which is for benchmarking. So we open up Quadrant. Okay, so we can now run the benchmark. So we're going to go into full, Run Full Benchmark and leave that to run. Okay, so Quadrant's still running, but these are just sort of videos and gameplay almost simulating. So you can see how smooth the motion actually is very good in the phone, especially with this power, because it's not a hugely powerful phone. It doesn't seem to be having any issues at all running all these animations and stuff. But it does show that even though it's not a hugely powerful processor, the phone still works absolutely perfectly in most tasks. So just let this whole thing finish. And it'll run all these different things. And there we go, so we're going to submit the benchmark results and see what it compares to other phones. So here's the benchmark results, which when I first ran this really surprised me. So as you can see here, it performs only slightly lower than the Motorola Droid X, which is sort of to be expected, even though the Motorola Droid X is a little bit more powerful in processor and stuff, it's actually quite cool that it's around about the same. What really surprised me though, is it's substantially higher than the Galaxy S, Nexus One and HTC Desire, which is really nice, showing that the power of this phone, despite it not being hugely powerful in processor, it still performs really well under lots of different tasks, so I am really impressed with the performance of this phone. Okay, so here we are back with the Motorola Defy. So overall this is a fantastic phone, I mean the power of this device is great, good quality all around, the build quality is fantastic obviously for a robust phone. You could in theory use this underwater, although that's not recommended, however it's good because if you want to use your phone in the rain, you can be safe to knowledge that it's not going to get damaged. Okay, so as we know the Defy is a waterproof phone, so I have some water and a phone. I'm going to give it a test. Here goes nothing. Oh, still working. Still working. And there you go. I have just poured a glass of water on the phone. Yep, it is wet and yep, phone still works absolutely perfectly. So let's look at the quality of the device. We can see on the side here it's very, very good. One minor quality issue I found is this volume rocker, which rattles slightly. I don't know if you can really hear it, but it just makes a very slight rattling noise. It's not a major problem, but it just means when you're holding it, it does feel a little bit rattly, but nothing major. However, other than that, this is a fantastic phone, really good quality, and a really good phone if you're looking for a tough and powerful Android phone. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And you can also visit our website at review-this.org.